We're trekking to Machu Picchu unguided. The 69 kilometer Salcante trek starts in Sarampai and ends in Aguas Calientes. But the cheapest option to trek to Machu Picchu with a tour agency was 200 US dollars per person, and this excluded so many additional costs like entry to Machu Picchu, sleeping bags, and tips for the amazing porters. So, throughout this journey, we're going to be showing you exactly how to trek to Machu Picchu completely unguided and we'll share with you exactly how much we spend. The hostel we ended up staying at is actually one of the hostels that host the group trekkers. Some um, people who had the same experience where they were kind of told to eat away from the group as if the companies don't want you to know that you can do the trek independently. <laughs> this is by far the longest trek we have ever attempted and we're going to be hiking at altitudes of up to 4,600 meters. To make things even more challenging, we've done no training and we've already booked our tickets to enter Machu Picchu, which means we have to complete what is normally a five day hike in four days. Good morning, beautiful people. Now that we are a bit more awake and clear of fort, well, we could tell you what this video is all about. For those of you that may not know, there are four popular routes to get to Machu Picchu. One of them, probably the most comfortable and luxurious one, is via train. More on that later. Second one is via car. And then there are two treks. One of them is probably the most popular trek in the whole of Peru called the Inca Trail. And it's beautiful because on your last day you have the sunrise right over Machu Picchu. And the last one, you would have guessed the one we on, the Salcante Trek. Whew. That's hot. So our van just dropped us off. It was 50 sol to get us here. Max and I actually went up to one of the tour agencies and asked if we could get a lift only to the trailhead rather than jumping on one of their guided trails. For those of you that are watching with the intentions of doing this trick by yourself on guided like we are, we will be giving out all the prices and all the places we are going to sleep and stuff like that. We went to the market yesterday, we got all our snacks four days for four days everything is accounted for so just snacks though it was a lot of fun prepping for everything we were really like yesterday we were buzzing yeah. and like couldn't sleep and stuff like that because alarm was at four so we, like, we have to sleep we have to sleep so i was super stoked to be here we'll tell you a little later as to why we're doing this trek as opposed to the inca trail but for now we're buzzing to be here the trek is actually going around san Cante, which is the mountain around here yeah, the mountain That's is at huge. 6200 or something also just so you guys know we haven't booked any accommodation along the trail we're just gonna see what we can find when we get there we also haven't brought any camping gear so our plan is to stay in places that provide everything we need so but make sure you stick around until the end we'll tell you exactly how much it costs to do the south Cantic trek unguided in 2024. So, without further ado, let the trick begin! Once again, Peru! First day! So 
excited to be here. closer and closer so quickly and then obviously the hard part is going to be up to Monte Lake but this is so beautiful and dare I say easy yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna eat my words soon San Pedro Market in Cusco and we stocked up on a bunch of dried fruits and nuts for this trek because they're full of like protein and sugar perfect snack for trekking and they were only five sol per 100 grams which I think is a pretty good deal like everything the cashews the mango pineapple apple everything was five sol so we got a whole bunch of those and they're bloody delicious so these are the domes that you can stay in and they seem so romantic online but they're made entirely of glass and they're right next to each other and also they're right next to the car park with all the white vans. Let's see there were some other ones further back as well that were pretty much the same like right on top of each other. They were like $250 per night but there are some different accommodation options including the domes, there's like some backpackers, Pretty sure there's some camping, which I think is the cheapest option, and I think that's the option we're gonna try to go for. Whoa, that's cool on snow. <laughs> All right, we've made it to the edge of town, and our quest for bed, ideally warm, has started. So the first one is still on the construction, and all the ones down there, like Jacqueline said, were very expensive. This is the bridge. This is the bridge. Jacqueline's stuck on the other side. Her legs are too short. She did it. I think she's upset because it took her so long to do it. 3,832 meters. Now, spot to sleep. We made it to Zorai Pampa. Camp of day one. A very pleasant, easy walk so far. Well, we actually found something. I give you a matrimonial bed at 25 sol per person. What? We were paying 20 Australian dollars in Cusco. We had a private room, a hot shower, breakfast included. Here you get a cold shower, you get Wi-Fi, and you share a room with 20 other people. Hopefully we have a nice sleep. The best part is the trek to the Laguna is right outside there. So no detour at all we can literally just go straight and back let's unpack hopefully find some lunch we just ordered they don't do a hot lunch here which kind of makes sense because everyone's off hiking so we ordered these sandwiches they're six sole it's just cheese and tomato but just to give you guys a bit of a reference these sandwiches which is cheese and ham were only one soul in town <laughs> And we just paid six for like the same thing, which is to be expected because you're up on the mountain. But considering it's day one, I would recommend just buying enough food in town so that you have it for lunch today and then spending the rest of your money on the following days. We're gonna eat lunch and then we're gonna go tackle Humantai. All right, so time for the part two of the day. We didn't stay very long, we just stopped for like, what, like 45 minutes, not even. Because if we stayed for any longer, I would have gone and had a nap. Yeah. I wouldn't have gone up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and the weather is funky donkey, so, oh ladies and gentlemen, a big event's taking place right now. Jacqueline is using trekking poles for the first time. First time ever, but apparently this is pretty steep. I don't really know how they work. <laughs> 
Look at a, a professional trinker. Beautiful spot. Very excited for part two of day one. Made it. This backdrop? Yeah. Wow. Exactly. One hour and one minute. Seriously? Yeah. We're so fast. Not bad, eh? Oh my god. It was hard though, guys. Yeah. This altitude, dang. I got a headache from it. For a first day, absolutely epic. And that's it. Like, we have to go back down, obviously. Are but we done for today? That's it. That's all we have to do today. Not bad. We did good. Oh man, we've been sleeping here for about an hour, I think. The temperature. Literally sleeping. Yeah, like we proper passed out. The clouds, clouds just... are insane. Yeah, the clouds are insane. They are so fast, and we have like a full 180 degrees of insane mountains. Yeah. We have to go all the way down there. Wow. accommodation now and we also booked dinner here as well which is 15 sol per person which hopefully we'll be having soon because we're pretty hungry so in total today including our dinner we spent 247.50 sol now one thing we forgot to mention earlier is that you do have to pay 20 sol per person just to come to this area to go up to Hermantai Lake our uh, transport stopped and organized that for us and we just paid for it so yeah 247.50 for two people comes to just under a hundred Australian dollars. Pretty good. Hey, I'm so cold. I just want to sit inside. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful people, from day two on the great journey to Machu Picchu. <laughs> 608. 608, and we have 21 kilometers to do today. And this one is, from what we've been told, the hardest day. It's like, we're already starting at almost 4,000 meters. Why I'm puffing, even though we're on park ground. <laughs> and we're going up, up, up to like, Five eight? Five. No, four eight. Oh, no, four, eight. four. It's around 5,000. Super up straight away. We got snacks, we got water. We got everything we need. Any, everything. Yeah. Like, we all sorted. We got all the warmth in layer. And by the way, our night was great. It was warm. There was like 16 oh, yeah. layers of blankets. Yeah, super. Actually, the hostel was pretty good. Like, yeah. for where you are, like, look, literally, look where we are. <laughs> but yeah, a great first night. Feeling strong, full, warm dry so ready for day two ready for day two
the benefits of going with an organized group tour is that you get porters and mules and horses to carry your load. So during the day, the only thing you have to carry is a day pack with enough water and if you want any snacks, but they actually carry all of your equipment that you need for camping, all of your food, they prepare all your meals, your clothes, like literally everything. You just give it to them and they carry it. The only thing is, is that if you go with the cheapest company, some of the companies don't treat their porters or their horses well. So you have to consider that. What I'm trying to say is that's one of the reasons why we chose to do the trek on our own. We know that no one is getting mistreated on our behalf. It's obviously harder because our backpacks are a lot heavier. We have to carry everything ourselves. But that's why we're staying in hostels and not camping. That's what real hikers do. They carry their load. <laughs> oh, but look at these kitty patooties. Yeah. Do your research if you're going to go with the group. Somebody's caught up with us. Oh, oh God. Why are you following me? Cause I'm all alone. There's no one here. <laughs> <laughs> Those donkeys, they uh, don't care if oh. you're in the way, apparently. Those donkeys, they don't care. We just got our first glimpse of Salcante for today. And we're supposed to be looking at Salcante all day today. It's meant to be our epic view for today's hike. And uh, it's covered in cloud. But they opened up just a tiny window right now and we can see it and it looks like a monster yeah. just appearing out of nowhere. Wow, and we can't even see the top as well. <laughs> so far so good, like yeah. my mom would say. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. What a life. Guys, the view, all angles you look at. So yesterday we had like the worst headache ever in the afternoon and it was obviously from my altitude. I am starting to get a headache again today already. So we bought these bad boys, which are altitude sickness pills. They were pretty expensive. It was like 22 sol for 10 pills. We don't know how to take them though. So we're not sure like, are you meant to take one? Are you meant to take two? Are you meant to take them when you get sick or before you get sick? We have no idea. Oops. <laughs> so we're just gonna pop one and see what happens. I figure it, if I'm starting to get a headache now, maybe it'll help me. So, what I'm done. A few moments later. All right, yeah. I like it, I like the confidence, son. Speaking of money, Obviously, we had to buy more water today. 20 sol for five liters of water. Highway robbery on the South Kante track for water. Super rocky, oh my God. You really gotta watch where you're walking. eight o'clock so I've been trekking for like two hours it's not hard it's not easy but it's like just you got to take it slow keep going I'm not sure if it's gonna get hotter later today like this afternoon or as we keep going up but I also don't know if maybe it's I just had like the worst I just expected it to be so hard because of what I read online we're like halfway for the uphill portion of the day. And then once we get to that summit, it's downhill for the rest of the day. So, oh my God. Wow, we are killing it. Nice. High five. <laughs> Obviously, like we said in the intro, this is the longest, hardest hike we've ever done. But that is just insane. 
it's just humongous. Like, like insane. I don't know how to. I don't know another word. Wow! I can't I did that. You bloody gazelle! Almost at the top of our climb. <laughs> Made it to the top. We're at the top. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Honestly, like. I can't believe we're already here. I thought we had to wait for that to go. Yeah, I thought it would be harder. Oh my God. Uh, we did good, guys. We did it. It is 9.01. I don't know exactly what time we left. I think it was just after six. So just under three hours to get here. Wow. That feels good. I feel alive. actually buy takeaway sandwiches from the hostel we stayed at which are five sol each but because they gave us so much breakfast we anyway as i was saying um they gave us so much breakfast and it was so early we couldn't eat it all so we put our eggs onto and made little egg sandwiches for lunch so lunch it's nine o'clock well, I guess so. Snack. All right, after maybe 20 minutes, some snacks. Time to hit the, the poles out. It's all downhill from here. So far, the day is so good. The trek is beautiful. The weather, it's cold, but it's not raining. So cold. <laughs> yeah, right, it's pretty cold. Epic trek so far. And we're just halfway. hours since we reached the top. We've just passed the town of Wadak Maichai. Uh, we were hoping to get lunch but actually we didn't because the only place that I did lunch were for the group. So I guess here is one of the cons of doing it by yourself. Luckily we had snacks so it's okay. It's a long downhill. We still have like three hours apparently. It's 12.42 so we have so much time but yeah for now we're just gonna carry on grinding, make it to Chalai and have a good meal because by then we'll be starving and hopefully we can get a meal in. Just been cruising down, struggling, yeah. struggling down, and as you can see, far less layers. It has changed completely. I don't know if you can already tell. Right from behind me, we're in a whole other world here. Obviously, we're dropping so much altitude that the vegetation is going to change. But to that drastic amount, I would have never thought that. It's, everything's full green, vivid. Still, as you can tell from behind as well, very much downhill. But yeah, we're just cruising along, listening to some podcasts and hopefully we'll make it soon because my toenails are screaming for help right now. Things you do sometimes that are just reckless and stupid.
Oh man, they're not broken at least. <laughs> Something here, guys. Finally made it to Cholai. Chawai. 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 <laughs> no, no. kilometers. Do we have a room in this town? That is the question. Ooh. So we found a place. To be honest, one. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. We're too tired to go around. It was only around. 20 souls per person to stay here. Bed. Dinner 15, breakfast 15. So, same as yeah. pretty much what we had yesterday. Oh well, it is what it is. We're happy to be here. We have plugs, so big day. Obviously, we're very tired. Yeah, <laughs> <I> can't tell. <laughs> yeah, this downhill was never ending. Never ending. Oh my god. We're gonna recover and we'll see you at dinner. Private dinner tonight. So the hostel we ended up staying at is actually one of the hostels that host the group trekkers. If you go for one of the companies, and they've uh, set up our dinner private away from the rest of the group. And uh, Max did read online that there was some people who had the same experience where they were kind of told to eat away from the group. As if the companies don't want you to know that you can do the trek independently. <laughs> I'm, like that was the vibe that they got, and then we've just been set up away from everyone else. So it makes sense, I guess. But, I mean, my little romantic dinner. Yeah, I'm happy to have a nice little party here. Look at that beautiful garden view. Tea. It's really cute here though. This hostel is like surrounded by all these mountains, has all these little chickens running around. Yay. All I know is that I don't know what we're eating, but it's been smelling divine so ever since we got here. So I'm starving. We're going to have lunch. Okay. <laughs> Gracias. Gracias. <laughs> I hate to complain. <laughs> um, uh... But for like 15 Seoul back in Cusco, you get a really good meal. Yeah. It's a little bit uh, disappointing. Good morning, beautiful people. You're finding us right where we left off. <laughs> but today is a little bit different and it's important to pay attention right now. So the Salkente trek is actually a five day trek. So four days of trekking through to Agnes. So what it would normally be is four days of trekking through the mountains to Aguas Calientes, which is the town right below where Machu Picchu sits. Then you stay in that town and then the next day, on the fifth day, you would go visit Machu Picchu. So that's why it takes five days. We only have four days. So today we are actually skipping 17 kilometers of hiking and we are going to jump into a colectivo. From where we are now, there's a road that runs along this valley, which is basically the trek that you'd be doing today. So instead, we're gonna jump in the Collectivo and we're gonna go to the next day four of the hike. We are staying in a hostel with one of the groups, so it's quite busy this morning. All right. Ready for day three? Alright, so there's a road right at the end here and you'll find them all here.
right, we've made it to the beginning of our day three trek. Oh my God, I can see the mountain that we're about to climb and it looks massive. I believe it's six kilometers in a very steep uphill and then five kilometers for a very steep downhill. 25 sol per person for that Collectivo. They're definitely charging tourist prices yes. for that. I don't think the locals are paying 25 sol because that's pretty steep for a one hour Collectivo, but I mean, you get what you get out here. Tourist price, <laughs> that's what it is. But the reason we decided to skip this portion of the hike instead of this very difficult portion of the hike is because this one kind of just runs along through the valley the whole day so you're kind of looking at the same view for 17 kilometers but this portion hopefully the cloud clears up because we should get a view of Machu Picchu today our first view I'm so excited yeah <laughs> Can't wait. Is that coffee beans? Is that a coffee bean tree? Maybe, yeah. Wow, it's really nice here. I wish we'd gotten the Collectivo yesterday. I don't know if there was one, but we should have asked for sure. Yeah. But we didn't, so learn from our mistakes. of the way up but this last one third is absolutely brutal it's so steep and we're just like crawling up here at such a slow pace it's humid it's hot <laughs> it's very beautiful only one third to go it looks cloudy so we might not get a view of Machu Picchu but I really hope we do we started at 2,000 meters. We are now just about to peak over 2,800. Whoa! We just gained 800 meters. So we're just going along the ridge till we find an opening so we can see the view. The view is pretty nice. The view is pretty spectacular. Now, will we see the view <laughs> of one of the world's wonder? I'm so nervous. I know. I'm really nervous. <laughs> <gasps> stop it. Stop it. Stop it. This is what we have been struggling for the last two and a half days. Wow. We've just been sitting here in awe of what we're doing right now. That we're sitting here, eating our nuts, having a picnic, literally looking at Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu, like we honestly, like it doesn't even feel real that we're sitting here. We're all alone, there's no one else around. And we've got this amazing view of Machu Picchu. And it just, it just doesn't feel real because it's one of those things that's just always on, been on the back of your bucket list or travel list. Like you want to do it, you want to do it. But especially for an Australian, Machu Picchu is just so far away. But we are very blessed to be here and just truly, honestly, like I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Lovely, but this one's really nice. Amazing view, you like getting a little bit 
sign here that says it's still two hours to Hydroelectrica, which is the next kind of town. So that's two hours of downhill. So it's gonna be a hard one to get through, but let's go. Okay, we're still going down. We're actually going down a thousand meter. Going from 28 to 1800 meters. 1800 meters will be the lowest throughout the whole hike. And that is pretty low when you think that even Cusco is at 34. But then once we're at the bottom, we have the train track for 10 kilometers. We made it to the bridge. checkpoint to basically sign in 10 kilometers left guys big day <laughs> Woo! It's what time? as you can see there is a train here and you could take the train from here to Aguas Calientes but like we said we're trying to find the cheapest way and the train is 30 US dollars per person so instead of taking the train, we'll be walking 10 kilometers. Oh, yes. oh, we found a place to eat. 15 so many of the day. These are drinks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sante. Cheers. So I'm trying for the first time Inca Cola. We've seen this everywhere in Peru and always when we go to restaurants people are drinking this drink here so my first taste of Inca Cola looks very different to regular Coca-Cola yum this was really good refreshing yeah. on this hot day nachos yes <laughs> so for our um, entree to our menu del dia we had a choice between vegetable soup or guac and nachos and obviously we chose guac and nachos because one it's a trillion degrees and two how can you ever not choose guac and nachos <laughs> The funniest thing is, is that after complaining about our dinner last night, we've accidentally ordered the exact same thing. It's exactly the same as last we night's didn't dinner. Know what we were ordering. <laughs> we just ordered something off the vegetarian option. Karma. It's exactly the same as last night. Karma. Eh? That's what we get for being spoiled brats and complaining. And just like that, we got a full stomach. That was the cutest lunch restaurant ever. They were really friendly and they played Christmas music the whole time. There were dogs and a cute kitten. Lunch all together came to 36 sol for two meal of the days and two drinks as well. Plus we bought a big 2.5 liter bottle of water for eight sol. Like it's amazing. It's so calm. Yeah. Wow, this is incredible. I am just shocked at I'm everything baffled. I read or watched. They were just like, and then we walked along some train tracks for a while. Like, no big deal. It wasn't that nice. But I mean, I can literally see Machu Picchu right there. Okay. How is this not that nice? This is incredibly beautiful. I don't know what people's like levels of nice are, but this is high. Okay. 
It's crazy to think we're on top of a mountain at 4,600 meters yesterday. And now you look at this, you feel like, I mean, for us, it feels like we're back in the jungle in Costa Rica. Crazy thing, this was like 24 hours ago. Absolutely amazing. That is one big, big good thing about this hike is how much of a different atmosphere, landscape, vegetation you get to see in a time of three days. Machu Picchu and the train. Peru, baby! Wow! Machu Picchu, baby! <laughs> this hike keeps on giving beautiful things we did not expect. Beautiful. Oh, and I mentioned there's some Inca ruins right there. Look at that. It's getting dark, guys. We have one and a half K left. And it's starting to get dark, if you can see. Definitely today took us a lot longer than expected because we started so late and then we took the Colectivo because we have to wait for the Colectivo. We started so late and it's just taken us longer. It's been a long day. Reservation, we actually, is the only one we actually pre-booked yes. because on booking.com, usually we get better rate than maybe we would have had on a walk-in. Maybe it would have cheaper. I regret that because there was a, a some sort of lodge back there that's way closer to the beginning of the hike tomorrow that looks really beautiful. Yeah. I kind of wish we'd stayed there. You have to book in your slots to get to Machu Picchu. We booked the earliest one, which is 6 a.m. <laughs> so yeah, we have to be at this gate at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Yep. So first one and a half K and then up to Machu Picchu. finally made it to our hotel <sighs> and I happened to book a hotel at the top of the hill on Agnes <laughs> Kelly and it's so good. 10 to 7. 10 to 7. What a day. And the worst part is that we have to leave at 4.30. So from here the hike to Machu Picchu is an hour and a half and we have to enter between 6 and 7. <sighs> Just to showcase, this is a proper budget video. We went to town because I went, we needed water for tomorrow morning and I was a little snacky and I was like, I mean empanadas. Believe it or not, we were quoted 22 sol for an empanada. Damn! Absolutely crazy. To show you guys this is a proper budget video, this is what I got, tin of tuna, five and a half sol. So uh, yeah, so, uh, beer, I really wanted fresh beer. Seven soul. Anyway, check in time in the shower. I'm gonna have my first shower in three days. I have an alarm in eight hours. And then, Machu Picchu, guys. Whoop, whoop. All right, beautiful people. As you can see, I am not in Machu Picchu. We actually felt that uh, Machu Picchu deserved its own entirely video. So this will be the next video we'll be posting. Nevertheless, we thought we did owe you the whole budget breakdown of doing the Salcante trek in 2024 unguided. So we are going to break down everything that's happened, how much we spent, where we went, just to give you a bit more detail uh, with a screen. All right, so let's jump right in. So in terms of the company that we used, um, we'll leave a link in the description, but here is a photo of them. This is this company right there. Uh, we did, like Jacqueline said, got I think three or four quotes. So they were definitely the most affordable one. They dropped us right on the trailhead, uh, which is next to Chalacancha. For those of you that have been seeing the screen, uh, use all trails, uh, which you can use offline. It was a great tool for me to be able to know exactly where we are and all those geeky stats, altitude. I mean, all those kind of things that you really enjoy looking at when you're hiking. So that's one thing I'd recommend you to do and get. Now we'll leave uh, on this description the exact trail that we followed. Uh, we didn't follow to a 100% T, but pretty much exactly that. So you can't get lost with that, hence the reason why you don't need a guide. I have the whole breakdown here. So it took us uh, 100 sol to get from the trailhead, uh, from Cusco to the trailhead. And then lunch, as you saw, was a bit more expensive. So I'd recommend if you're on a tight budget, 
Get your lunch in Cusco the day before or just prep it in the morning if you have time. You'll definitely save a bit of money on that. Dinner was great. We really had a good time there. Very, very convivial and great amount of pasta. So it was really good. And then the snacks, the snacks helped like a gem. So go to that market in Cusco. Even if you're not hiking, honestly, it is an amazing market. And uh, yeah, very affordable for dried fruit, which were an amazing snack. We'd never really had that before. So we now we're addicted to those. Um, and nuts, obviously can't go wrong with nuts. Um, and we basically divided that over four days. So it comes down to 14 and a half sol. Uh, I've made sure I specified that this is for two people. Uh, it's rarely for one. So you can do the math if you're doing this by yourself. And then the accommodation, rudimental, but warm. Um, and bring earplugs that will help because hostel life and then the trekking equipment we did the same we broke it down to day by day um, Jacqueline rented backpack which was really good here is the photo of it we'll leave it in the description where we got it and uh, we actually did our laundry in the same place after the trek so multi multi-purposeful so yeah she got backpack and trekking poles from what i understand she really got some help from the trekking poles because that long downhill on day two really really tiring so really good to have as an extra tool and as you can see from the price definitely worth it i mean 13 sold for backpack and trekking poles highly recommendable Honestly, Cusco has everything you need to rent your equipment and at a very affordable price. So the first day comes down to 70 US dollars, uh, which is for two people, as you can see, very affordable. Uh, we do have to include the park entrance to the lake, Humantel Lake, which you do not have to do if you don't want to. But we really, really recommend doing it because it is, as you can see, so very, very beautiful. And day one is in any case very quick. so. Might as well, you know. So for day two, uh, starting sorry Pampa, and we had the whole down uphill with what would have been the view of uh, Salcante right in front of you here. It was actually very, very nice, very beautiful, uh, not hot. So it was a very pleasant walk. One thing that we did not do on the trek that is recommended from all trails is this section right here, which is called the Seven Snakes. Um, as you can see it's a lot of zigzag and then you just join back so we just went straight here instead of going up and down to each their own for us it was not really necessary and then we peaked it was 4600 meters which was very beautiful very high but very well worth it and highly doable what was really hard though for the both of us is this long 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 downhill Took us, I think, like six hours, uh, which really didn't break our spirit, but very, very long downhill. So we're very happy to make it to Now for day two, we basically had the breakfast very early in the morning, which was great. Dinner um, after a long day, snacks once again. Water, you can't not buy water unless, which is what we really recommend and we really want to get for next time, um, get those filtration water system thing that you buy and then you just get it straight off the stream because save on plastic saving on money so yeah something to to recommend and for us to know for next time accommodation once again very rudimental but still we had a private room so that was good and yeah no park entrance just a walk so day two was 157 so 42 and a half dollars once again, a very cheap day. Now for day three, um, we, as you saw the explanation from Jacqueline, we skipped the entirety of the trek, of the whole Salcante trek, it's day three, because it was indeed right through the canyon. Um, it was a beautiful drive and I'm sure it's a beautiful hike, but if you tight on time like we were, because of the restriction of your time slots and your day slots and your overall travel with Machu Picchu, then it's one day to skip and then we basically got dropped off by the collective at the bottom of that mountain here this mountain was absolutely beautiful just very hot because the amount of meters that you've dropped in altitude is insane so you're definitely in a whole new environment than you were in the previous day at a high altitude yeah once you get to the top you have the view of Machu Picchu which is an amazing sight and you basically see okay this is what I've been trekking for and you're in a way so close so it's a really good motivational spot um, and beautiful spot for the picnic like you saw and then once at the top long downhill down to the canyon to the river to uh, Hydroelectrica once again you saw Jacqueline mention the price for the train 
not within our budget or not our goal. Great lunch spot though, and a great people watching spot because it's right above the train station. And then an amazing, amazing section along the train track. And yeah, for day three, so we had the Colectivo, 50 Sol. It could have been cheaper maybe for local, who knows? It's still very affordable. Breakfast, lunch and dinner, so we had all of that. Dinner was all by myself with my tuna. Um, and then the snacks, the water, I mean, inevitable once again. Accommodation, uh, we did book it on booking.com, but Aguas Caliente, very, very touristy, so just a heads up. So yeah, we actually, the breakfast for the next day for Machu Picchu, we bought it a cake at a bakery the night before because the breakfast, everything was just too expensive. So yeah, that's one tip as well. So total for day three, 69 US dollars. So a very affordable day. Now for day four, we made a whole other video because we felt that Machu Picchu deserves its own video. Um, so it will be posting in a couple of days. If it is already posted, you'll find it right there. Um, and in terms of the entrance, we bought quite a few days in advance and we bought it with Huayna Picchu. I'm not gonna go too much in details because uh, we're gonna make a whole detailed video on all the entrance and what section and what circuit and what guide and stuff like that. But the whole day totally costed us 164 US dollars. Obviously much more, it's Machu Picchu. But yeah, overall an amazing, amazing trek. Sadly, we cannot compare it to In The Ink Trail. Um, if any of you that are watching this have done it or are gonna do it, please feel free to let us know what you, how you would compare the two. But doing it alone is an amazing feeling. You, you do not have that aspect of conviviality perhaps, but nevertheless, it's a very cool adventure to do with your partner. So the moment we've all been wondering how much it would cost for four days to trek the Salcante Trek Unguide in 2024, uh, including the entrance of Machu Picchu is 346 US dollars. We did get a guide in Machu Picchu. We prepped pretty well, so we economized as much as we could. But yeah, 346 US dollars and uh, yeah, hell of a ride. So thank you so much for watching. I know it's been a long video, so I really appreciate you sticking around that much. If we did miss things, please let us know. I'm sure I have missed a lot of things. But let us know and uh, we'll see you in Machu Picchu. Thank you guys. Like the devil's thorns. We feel so like adventuristic, epic. Like how cool do you feel right now? <sighs> yeah. This little piglet. Does that not look like the Shire right behind me? <laughs> look at this little baby piglet. We've just been sitting here in awe. It's unbelievable. I didn't want to do it, so I put it on there. <laughs> I let it melt. I'm, like, I'm too some... tired to I'm scared of my broken tooth. We bought dried mango and it's really chewy. 